Hello everyone. In today's video I present to you all six modes of operation for symmetric encryption. If you haven't watched the video on symmetric encryption yet, make sure to watch it before you watch this video. Also, watching the video on Feistel networks is probably useful. I will put the links to those videos in the description. To shortly introduce why we're dealing with modes of operations in the first place, uh, when we're encrypting block ciphers, we run into the problem that pl uh, same plain texts encrypt into same ciphertexts. An attacker can therefore use this to his advantage in order to break the encryption. A mode of operation therefore takes care of a series of blocks, which are then dependent on each other to add diffusion to the encryption process. That means that the structure of equal plain texts is going to be diffused. In this probably a bit longer video, we will look at each of the six modes of operation. Let's start. First, electronic codebook mode. This isn't really a mode of operation because each block is encrypted separately from the other blocks. That means that no diffusion takes place and same plain texts become same ciphertexts. Next, CBC or cipher blockchain mode. To encrypt clear text block X, 0, we first XOR it with an initializing vector. Initializing vectors will be prominent through all, all modes of operations and it just means a random or pseudo-random stream of bits to get the algorithm going. The result is XOR with the symmetric key and thereby encrypted to the resulting cipher block Y0. The result is also taken as initializing vector for the next clear text block X1. This continues until all clear text blocks are encrypted. To decrypt, you just reverse the operation by using Y0 after decryption of Y1, for example, and the initializing vector to decrypt Y0. Faulty ciphertext blocks only affect themselves, obviously, and only the following block. As you can see, if Y1 is corrupted, only X1 and X2 suffer, since Y3 is fed by Y2 and is independent of Y1. This is also an issue regarding security, as an attacker can inject ciphertexts without it being noticed. Let's move on to CFP, the cipher feedback mode. We have seen in CBC that operations occur block by block, so whole blocks are needed to decrypt and encrypt. That means a decryption can only start if a full block has arrived. If a different approach is necessary, then CFP can be used since it works byte by byte and doesn't have to wait for whole blocks. In that way, it works a little bit like a stream cipher, although these work bit by bit. Let's look at how it works. First, we assume that 8 bytes have already been encrypted. These are in the 64-bit shift register, uh, pictured here and are the bytes Y2 until Y9. If a new plain text byte X10 arrives, the register gets encrypted. Then the leftmost byte drops out of the register and gets XORed with X10. The result is the encrypted Y10, which gets sent to the receiver alongside a copy which is put on the right side of the register to keep it at 8 bytes. A full schematic version of the algorithm can be seen here. We now move over to decryption. The byte Y10 now arrives at the receiver. Note that we use the same 64-bit shift register as before. Before anything happens, the new byte Y10 gets added to the register. Then, for simplicity reasons, we just say that Y2 drops out of the register and gets XORed with Y10 to yield the original X10. Why is this the original X10? If you've paid attention in my previous videos where I talk about XOR, you already know that XORing the same value twice results in the mutual elimination. As we see here, XORing Y10 with the encrypted Y2 equals to X10 X or the encryption of Y2. Uh, since this is what we did in the encryption step, XOR the encryption of Y2. You'll note that we XOR E of Y2 twice, which means that the result is X10. Here again, the schematic illustration of the algorithm. Next, we move on to output feedback mode OFB. We have seen that in the previously discussed CFB, every block depends on all previous blocks and errors would propagate throughout the ciphertext. OFB takes care of that by making sure that blocks can be decrypted independently. It also works on a byte-by-byte -byte basis. If a plain text byte X0 has to be encrypted, first an initializing vector together with the encryption box works as a pseudo one-time pad which is XORed with X0 to yield Y0. 
The result of the combination of initializing vector and encryption box is now used as a new feed Z0 for the next byte and so on. To illustrate the immunity towards errors, we can look at Y1. It only depends on X1 and Z0 and not on Y0. Meaning, if Y0 gets altered during transmission, I can still decrypt Y1 without any problems, which I could not do in the previously presented mode CFB. However, this also contains some risks, since an attack is aided in decrypting ciphertext if the initializing vector repeats itself, which means that the same clear texts are encrypted to same ciphertexts. This is also the main vulnerability of RC4 or WEP, although this is a stream cipher. Next, we move on to counter mode. Again, a code block X0 has to be encrypted. We again have an initializing vector, the encryption box using the symmetric key, an XOR function and the result Y0. We do the same with X1 and you can already see that there are no dependencies between the blocks. The only thing keeping them together is the initializing vector that gets iterated throughout the blocks. This mode has been introduced to quickly access certain blocks of ciphertext without having to decrypt all the previous blocks first. The most interesting thing about CTR, the plain text doesn't really get encrypted, but CTR forms key blocks that are linked to the plain text, which results in the possibility to access blocks in the middle, as you only need the initializing vector, the key and the counter to decrypt ciphertexts. The final mode of operation is GCM, the Galois counter mode. GCM is a speciality since it is the only mode that offers authenticated encryption. It is called AEAD, Authenticated Encryption with Associated Data. It does this by adding authentication tags to the ciphertexts. Additionally to confidentiality, GCM therefore also covers the protection goals integrity and authenticity. As the name suggests, GCM uses the counter mode to encrypt data. The only difference is the authentication part of the algorithm. First, the initializing vector, together with the symmetric key, form the first part of the authentication tag. The first block is now encrypted using the counter mode, yielding Y1. Now the Galois part comes into play. Authentication data taken from the plain text gets multiplied with the hash key and XORed with the resulting ciphertext Y1. Remember, we use counter mode, so there is no dependency regarding encryption between two blocks. So the next block gets encrypted with the incremented initializing vector. However, the result is XORed with Y1. Y1 is multiplied with the hash key before that operation. Together, they are again multiplied with the hash key and are XORed with the first part to finally result in the final authentication tag. The algorithm is a bit more complicated, but the main idea and order of operations is still there. You can tell me in the comments if you'd like to have a deeper dive into Galois counter mode. For now, and to conclude the modes of operations, it is left to say that GCM is very fast due to the multiplications which are done in parallel to the actual counter mode. It is also not reliant on other methods of integrity such as MAX and is therefore self-contained and serves the protection goals confidentiality, integrity and authenticity. That concludes today's video. If you enjoyed this content and found it useful, consider subscribing to the channel to keep the videos coming. See you in the next.